Let's practice a few exponential growth and decay application word problems together. Real quick, before we get started, in the description box below you can find a link to a free PDF as well as AnswerKey PDF that we are working on in this video, so feel free to go ahead and download those if you find them helpful. Alright, let's jump right into it. For number one, we know that the rent for a particular apartment is going to be $6,600 per year, and that's going to be in the year 2012. If the rent is going to increase at a rate of 4% each year thereafter, we're going to go ahead and use an exponential equation to figure out the cost of the rent of the apartment in 2017. Right away, we want to identify that the starting rent was $6,600 per year, and that was in 2012. Then we want to find out what the rent change is going to be. It looks like the rent is increasing at a rate of 4% each year after that. So it's important that we know that we have an increase as well. And finally, we're being asked to figure out what that rent is going to be in the year 2017. And that's going to be compared to or being used with this year of 2012, where we know some information already. Alrighty, so right off the bat, we do want to know if we are dealing with an exponential growth or a decay function here. And how do we know what that's going to be? Well, we can see here that there's a keyword in this problem where it says increases. That lets us know that we are going to be dealing with a growth function. So in this particular problem, we're going to deal with growth so we don't have to worry about the decay function. Now, a real quick refresher, this A represents whatever the amount is going to be at the end. The P represents whatever the initial amount is starting with. R represents the rate of change, so that could be increasing or decreasing because we have an addition sign here. That means we have a growth because of the word increase. And then this variable of T up in the exponent represents the amount of time represented in years. So going ahead and writing this equation, we're going to say what was the rent in 2017? We don't know. That's going to be equal to P, which is going to be the initial rent cost, and that's going to be $6,600. Okay, that's going to be per year. That's going to be multiplied by 1 plus whatever that rate is. Now the rate is going to be 4%, so we have to make sure we take that 4% and change it into a decimal. So 4% as a decimal is going to be 0 0.04. Okay, that's going to be the rate. And now for this variable of t, that represents how many years have gone by. So from 2012 to 2017, that's a span of 5 years. So we know that t is going to equal 5. Now we can't simplify this too much, but we can go ahead and add what's in this parentheses or the base of that exponent or that power. So we can go ahead and write that the uh, rent cost uh, in 2017 is going to be equal to that original amount in 2012 or that 6,600 multiplied by this new amount here. This is going to be one plus that uh, 0.04 or 100% plus that 4%. That's going to be 1.04 or also known as 104% and that's going to be raised to the power of 5. So it's compounded over 5 years. Now this would be a lot to do by hand so typically what you're going to do is throw this into a calculator. Uh, you can go ahead and raise that 1.04 to the fifth power first, do that exponent and then multiply that by, is it, by this uh, 6600 or if you have a calculator that kind of follows that order of operations you can do it all at once. So the amount of that rent in this uh, 2017 is going to be approximately, we need to round to the nearest penny here because we're dealing with money, uh, and I'm getting that this would be about $8,029, and I'm seeing a 909, so I'm going to the thousands place so that we can round to the nearest penny. So that thousands place number is to help us round to the nearest penny, so that 9 is going to bump that 0 up to a 1, so this is going to be 8000 $29.91. So in conclusion, we can go ahead and say that the rent in 2017 would be about $8,029.91. Here's number two. For number two, the population of a town was 14,000 in the year 2010. If the population decreased at a rate of 1.5% each year thereafter, we need to go ahead and use an exponential equation to find the population after 10 years have gone by. So it looks like the original population of this town was 14,000 people. That was in the year 2010, so that's the original population. Then in terms of a rate, we can see here that the population decreased at a rate of 1.5% per year after that. And also take note that we know that the time span for this whole thing is going to be across 10 years. Alright, so let's go ahead and take this information. 
and decide if we are dealing with a growth or decay function here. Now there is a keyword in this problem. If you noticed it, that's really, really good. This is that word decreased. So we know the population is going down over time for some reason. So we're gonna go ahead and use this decay function as opposed to the growth one. And again, the only difference here is this minus and this plus, otherwise everything is going to stay the same. All right, so let's go ahead and substitute in what we know here. So we have this A, which is gonna be the population after 10 years. That's gonna be equal to P, which is gonna be equal to the original population. That's gonna be 14,000 people. That was over in 2010. Then we're gonna go ahead and multiply this by one, which is really 100%, but we're gonna go ahead and take away the rate, which is gonna be 1.5%. But if you slide that decimal twice to the left or divide it by 100, that's going to be 0.015 as a decimal. So that's 1.5% expressed as a decimal. And this is gonna be raised to whatever T is. Now we're dealing with 10 years, so T is going to equal 10. All right, there isn't too much we can simplify here, but we can simplify this one whole take away this uh, 15 thousandths. So we can go ahead and rewrite this a little bit uh, simpler. So we can say that the population in 2000, I guess 20, 10 years later, is gonna be equal to 14,000, which is the original population. And we're gonna go ahead and multiply that by whatever one minus is 0.015. That's gonna be, I believe, 0 0.985 or 985 thousandths and this is gonna be raised to the 10th power. Now, at this point, you're gonna throw this into a calculator. If you need to do it in two steps, go ahead and do the exponent or the power first, then multiply it by 14,000, or if you have a calculator that does it all at once, then you can go ahead and use that. Now, we're dealing with people here because it's population, so uh, when we go ahead and do this calculation, we're gonna get that the population tw uh, 10 years later is gonna be 12,000, 36 people and we do want to know at least one decimal so we can decide if we're going to round up or round down uh, Now that two tenths there as a decimal lets us know we're going to round down So we're going to say that the population is going to be about 12,036 people uh, and that's rounded to the nearest person The population 10 years later in this town would be about 12,036 people and hopefully that makes sense because it's less than what we started with in 2010 where there was a population of 14,000 Here's number three. In this example, we can see that an investment of $8,200 is going to lose value at a rate of 2% per year, so not a great investment. We're gonna go ahead and use an exponential function or equation here to go ahead and find the value of the investment after nine years have gone by. Right away, we can see from the beginning that the initial investment or what we started with is gonna be $8,200. And then we can see that this is going to be changing at a specific rate of 2% per year. Finally, we also know that we're talking about a time period of nine years. Taking this information, we do have to think about whether this would be a growth or decay function. Now the key word that you wanna notice is this word loses over at the first part of this scenario. So if the investment is not doing well and it's gonna go down over time, then we know that your money is essentially decaying in this investment or it is going down. It's definitely not growing. Let's go ahead and use this function or equation here and make some substitution. So this capital A is gonna be representing what your money is gonna be worth after nine years have gone by. What we're gonna do is that capital P is gonna be your principal amount or what you initially put in. So that's gonna be $8,200. That's what we first put into the investment. We're gonna go ahead and multiply that by one or 100% minus the rate of change here. So it looks like it's gonna be 2% per year. As a decimal, 2% is two out of 100 or uh, 2 hundredths, so 0 0.02. And that's gonna be raised to the T power. And T represents nine years. So we're gonna go ahead and put an exponent of nine. Inside here for the base of the power or the exponent, we can go ahead and combine those two. So we're gonna have how much money is it gonna be worth after nine years? That's going to be equal to the initial amount put in, which is 8,200. And we're going to go ahead and multiply that by whatever 100% minus 2% is, which should be 98%, also known as 0 0.98. So we're going to keep 98% per year, and we're going to compound that over a span of nine years or do this nine times. 
Now again, at this point, we go ahead and use a calculator. So we would do this power first and then multiply that by 8,200 or do all of it at once if you have a calculator that allows you to do so. So what is this investment going to be worth over time? Well, we're talking about money here. So let's go ahead and round to the nearest thousands place first and then we'll round to the hundredth place because we need to have some pennies here. So plugging this into a calculator, we're gonna get that this uh, investment after nine years is gonna be worth about $6,836. Uh, but what about the, I guess the parts or the pennies here? I'm getting seven, three, and then one. That's gonna be the first three decimal places. Now, uh, we need a one just to know if we were rounding up to, uh, you know, 74 cents or staying at 73 cents. So uh, because it's a one, we're gonna stay the same. So it's gonna be $6,836.73, okay? So that one just tells a three to stay the same. In conclusion, after nine years, the initial investment of $8,200 would lose some value and would be worth $6,836.73, give or take a little bit in this time period. Here's one more problem. In this example, the number of student athletes at a local high school is going to be 300 students initially, and it's going to be increasing at a rate of 8% per year. Okay, so the amount of student athletes is going to be going up over time. We're going to go ahead and use an exponential equation to find the number of the student athletes after five years have gone by. Right away, it's important to know that the original number of students here is going to be 300. That's how many are going to be the student athletes. Next, it's important to know that this amount of athletes is going to be increasing at a rate of 8% per year. So that's going to be the rate of change. And finally, we're going to be looking at the projections after five years, what we're going to be expecting to happen. First things first, let's go ahead and decide whether this is going to be a growth or decay equation or function here. And we have to look for a keyword that lets us know if it's increasing or decreasing. It does say over here that the amount of athletes is going up over time. So if you saw that, then wonderful. That means we're dealing with an exponential growth function. So our base for our power or exponent has to be greater than one. So let's go ahead and make some substitutions now. So we have A, which is gonna be how many student athletes there will eventually be. That is dependent on a few things here. So first, we know that there were 300 of these student athletes at the beginning of this uh, problem. And then we have one, which is 100% plus what's the percent it's changing by. Looks like R is going to be 8%. Uh, but as a you know decimal, we're going to say that's going to be 0 0.08. So 0 0.08. So again, 8% is 8 out of 100 or 8 hundredths. And then we're going to go ahead and raise that to the T power. But we actually know that T is going to be 5 because we know this is over a span of 5 years. Just like all the other examples we've taken a look at, we can go ahead and basically just simplify the inside of this uh, parentheses or grouping symbol, which is gonna be the base of the power. And so the amount of student athletes after five years is dependent on the 300 initial ones that we had here. And then 100% plus 8% is gonna be 108%, also known as 1.08. And that's gonna keep compounding over five years or five times. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and plug this into a calculator. And remember that because this value here, the base of the exponent is larger than one, this is going to be an exponential growth as opposed to an exponential decay. Going ahead and plugging this into a calculator, uh, we're talking about number of people here. So we should round to the nearest uh, tenths first and then go to the nearest whole number of people. So uh, in a calculator, I'm getting about 440 point, uh, let's go with seven here. Um, that's gonna be to the nearest tenths place. Because we're dealing with people, we're gonna go ahead and round this to the nearest whole number. So I would round this to 441 people. Give or take a student, whether you said 440 or 441, depends on how you're rounding up or rounding down here. We can say that after five years, if the number of the student athletes is increasing at a rate of 8% per year, we would expect there to be about 441 student athletes at this school. So there you have four different practice problems on exponential growth and decay. Hopefully this helped a little bit with just helping you find out where to kind of put the pieces of the problem and how to solve it. Again, it's definitely helpful to have a calculator that'll do a little bit of the work for you. And so you can go ahead and focus on the actual exponential functions and making sure that the answers do make sense in these different contexts. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing with a friend who may also find it helpful. And as always, keep it the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.